Hello and a very warm welcome to the lesson conducted by Sai Shufu. Now this video aims to let you and your child have an exposure as to how Sai Shufu will conduct the lessons both online and in the physical classes. Now just a short introduction about myself. My name is Andy Ling. You can see down here in this picture. All right, there is me at the front. And I'm the founder of SainShufu.com. Right, the SainShufu.com is an online platform that allows the, your child to learn all the exam techniques, all the thinking processes behind each of the exam questions. Now, the reason why I want to create the SainShufu uh, webpage is because over the past years, I have been teaching many students and they always have this same problem. And that is, every time I see them one week later, they will forget. All right, the thinking process, the exam technique that was taught to them really. And there will always be time spent to repeat the same techniques or the same concepts that was taught to them in the prior week. So by having this uh, scienceshifu.com website, I aim to uh, help the students save their time, all right, in terms of uh, not spending so much time on recalling the concepts, but rather to spend their time on applying the science knowledge to the exam questions. Moving on to the lesson, Introduction to Water Cycles and Changes in State. What is it that you are expected to know from this lesson? Now, this particular video serves to teach the P5 and P6 students. So students or kids watching this video, if you are in uh, P3 this year and you're moving on to P4 in the year 2019, all right, I highly uh, suggest you not to watch this video because many of these concepts here are mainly applicable all right, to the P5 or P6 students because the thinking process is deeper, all right, much deeper than what you have learned in P3 or P4. The next pointer to know is that there will be a need to understand some of the science knowledge that I'll be sharing with you. And I'll be sharing with you some of the ways in which how science knowledge is applied to the questions. What are the different ways how examiners will test your child's understanding of the science knowledge? Now, let's learn the first science knowledge. Good and poor conductors of heat. So for the materials that are good conductors of heat, how are you going to explain the science process? All right, for materials that are good conductors of heat, the materials will gain heat quickly or easily. Now, you need, students, you need to take note that it works both ways. Huh? If the material is a good conductor of heat, the material will not only gain heat quickly or easily, the materials will also lose heat quickly or easily. Okay? It works both ways. Many students right, over the past years that I have taught, they only remember this first portion. They forget about the second portion here. And that is why when the exam comes up with another way to apply this science knowledge, they will fumble already. Okay? So you need to know these two parts. Right? They will gain heat quickly and easily, and materials will also lose heat quickly or easily. Now for the examples, you need to know some of the very common examples in your daily lives and that includes steel, iron and aluminium. Now as for aluminium, it is commonly found in your canned drinks, for example, your can, uh, the canned drink on a Coke or the canned drink on Pepsi or some canned drinks on your green tea uh, that you have drank before. So we have understood what are the good conductors of heat. Let's move on to the materials, they are the poor conductors of heat. Now it works the opposite way, all right? If the materials, they are poor conductors of heat, it means these two pointers. It means that the materials will gain heat slowly. Keyword here is slowly. And the materials will also lose heat slowly, okay? Now some of the examples will include the plastic, wood, or styrofoam. Okay, the styrofoam is commonly found when you're ordering packaging food, right? Let's say you want to order a packet of chicken rice. Right, instead of using a paper wrapper, they use a mini styrofoam box to put in the rice and the chicken meat on top of it. All right? Styrofoam is a material that is a poor conductor of heat. Again, final note, please remember that materials all right, gain heat slowly and you will also lose heat slowly. All right? Please remember these two pointers here. We have now understood what are the good or poor conductors of heat. Let's look at how the science knowledge is applied to the exam question. Now in the exam questions, there are three hurdles that your child has to overcome. Okay, there are three hurdles out there. What are they? Firstly, your child needs to understand the science knowledge behind it. 
Now, what do I mean by understanding the science knowledge? It just simply means your child's ability to describe. All right, let's say a particular object, this plastic here. All right, is it a good or poor conductor of it? And tell me why is it a good or poor conductor of it? So your child can say, oh, plastic is a poor conductor of it because plastic can uh, take in heat slowly or plastic will lose it slowly. All right. So it means that the temperature of the plastic will remain rather, you know, it won't change so much, all right, over a short period of time. That is where your child will under, has understood the science knowledge on good or poor conductors of heat rating. Okay, if you can describe it to someone, all right, how the particular science knowledge works, especially in a very simple situation, your child has understood the science knowledge. Now, this is the first hurdle that your child has to overcome. The second hurdle that your child has to overcome is to read the question very carefully. Alright, because in the science exam, there are just simply too many traps or too many conditions all right, for your child to filter out and choose the correct science knowledge in their exam questions. So there's a need for the child to read the question very carefully. And in this lesson, I'll be sharing with you some tips as to how all right, you will, your child will be able to grasp the requirement of the questions. Lastly, once when your child has understood, oh, what are the science knowledge and what, how, what are the requirements of the question, your child needs to be able to write their answers clearly. And that is where Science Shufu will show you some of the simple pointers that you can take away from this lesson here to explain the uh, science uh, knowledge clearly in the question. Let's move on to how the science knowledge is applied to the question one. Remember, the science knowledge that we have learned just now is the good and poor conductors of heat. So in question one, you have seen this uh, diagram that shows the steel bench and the wooden bench. Now, kids, take note, uh, whenever you see a question that has two different materials in one question, all right, you need to know that, oh, this question is trying to test you on the size knowledge of good or poor conductors of heat. You're supposed to identify the correct size knowledge. Right, based on the clues in the question. So, in this question, the question says both benches are placed under the hot sun. And after four hours, Michael sits on a steel bench and jumps out of the steel bench immediately. Wow, this keyword here to me is rather important. Why? Because it shows urgency. Okay, it shows a degree of urgency. Means that the steel bench is too hot already. That's why Michael cannot sit on it. And in another situation, all right, Michael then sits on a wooden bench, and this time round he did not jump out of the wooden bench. Means that he continued to sit on it, right? And the question asks you to explain this situation. Now, what do I mean by explain this situation? Your school teacher will have already taught you, right? You need to use the correct science knowledge, or rather the correct science concepts in the question, okay? Now, unfortunately, many students who first join the online class or the physical class, they tend to uh, they do not know how to apply the science knowledge to the question. What do I mean? All right, let me give you an example. If the question asks you to explain this particular situation that Michael is facing, all right, an extreme situation will be like this. Mike, uh, there is some spell that is being cast onto the uh, seat down here. And that is why when Michael sits on it, Michael will immediately jump out of the steel band because there's a spell down here. Now, would you want to use the word spell to, ex to explain why the Michael jump out of the steel bench and not the, the wooden bench? Of course not, right? Because it just doesn't make sense at all. The answer has no logic. But unfortunately, that is what all right, many students who first joined the physical class and the online class, they, they apply that all right, wrong thinking process to the question. What do I mean? Let's look at this first example. Steel bench is hotter than the wooden bench. All right? Now, when you say the word hotter than a wooden bench, you're, you don't even apply any science knowledge at all, okay? You're just simply describing to the examiner what had happened to the bench. The bench is now hotter. But the question says, why did Michael jump out of the steel bench and not the wooden bench? You can see that there's no relation to what the question is asking you, all right? And at the same time, why is it a steel bench hotter, all right? You're, giving a teacher more doubts right, as to why you put this word hotter. No link at all. all right? Your teacher will not have the time to interpret your answers. So it becomes like this boy here right, trying to come up with a spell. All right? Some incomprehensible incantation. All right? Don't know what you're trying to say. Don't know what you're trying to explain. 
Another wrong answer will be this. Steel bench gains more heat from the sun than the wooden bench. The teacher will be thinking, huh? Does it mean that steel bench is hotter? Can you see that? This answer here is pretty similar to the answer in example one. Steel bench gains more heat from the sun than the wooden bench. Right? It just simply means steel bench is still hotter than the wooden bench. Again, not answering the question. All right, don't know what is the question. Uh, don't know what is the, the student trying to uh, explain now here. Another incorrect answer. Michael jumps out of the steel bench first compared to the wooden bench. All right. A few students write this, and this is absolutely wrong because you're just simply describing what has happened in the question. The question asks you to explain why this situation happened. And this, this student right, just re paraphrase right, what's in the question into this. So this is wrong. Huh? And the last mistake, all right? Michael is too hot. That is why Michael jumps out of the bench. What are you trying to imply here? Are you trying to say that Michael is a handsome guy? All right? What are you trying to mean here? Does he have a fever? All right, I don't know. All right, what are you trying to talk about? Again, you can see that uh, this kind of answers leaves room for the teacher to interpret. It's like akin to what I mentioned just now. You are just cast, uh, saying some uh, spells and hope to explain your way through. That is not the correct way. All right, your answer must be logical. It must include the science knowledge. Okay. And what do I mean by that? Now let's recall back to this question down here. Steel bench and the wooden bench, you need to explain the situation. You need to apply the science knowledge to this question down here. All right. So the question is quite clear to you. It mentions why did Michael jump out from the steel bench and Michael continues to sit on the wooden bench. You need to explain it from the perspective of Michael. All right. Not from the perspective of the bench. So in the online lessons, I'll be sharing some of the general pointers that you are that you have to know, all right? Especially when it comes to materials that has good or and poor conductors of it, you need to compare, all right? So the first pointer you need to know will be the concept. What's the concept in question number one? Is that steel is a better conductor of heat than wood, okay? Steel is a better conductor of heat than wood. And what do I mean by that? When I mention steel is a better conductor of heat than wood, it means that when Michael sits on a steel bench, Heat from the steel bench is quickly lost to mica. Can you see how heat flow works? Heat flow must always have at least two objects, right? Moving from one area to another area. So when mica sits on the steel bench, heat from the steel bench is quickly lost to mica. Can you see the science knowledge that we applied to the question down here? A good conductor of heat will always gain heat quickly or lose heat quickly. So you can see I use the exact same keywords down here and apply it to the question. Okay. And what will happen is that the end result is that the Michael will gain too much heat and jumps out of the steel bench. Remember the question says Michael jumps out of the bench immediately, right? Because Michael has gained so much heat so quickly, that is why it becomes too hot for Michael and Michael will jump out of the steel bench. That is the thinking process behind this question number one down here. All right. So these four general pointers, which I have uh, shared in the online classes, Remember these four general pointers to help you to explain all right, your answers clearly. So I will re-paraphrase it because in the exam, they, are, they don't allow you to use pointers. You need to re-paraphrase it and put it down into the open-ended uh, questions all right, in these correct sentences. So steel is a better conductor of heat than wood. And when Michael sits on a steel bench, heat from the steel bench is quickly lost to Michael. And Michael then gains, because Michael gains too much heat, and he eventually he jumps out of the steel bench. Now, they don't need to compare between the two, right? So therefore, you need to add him by saying, Michael can continue to sit on the wooden bench as the wooden bench loses heat slowly to Michael. Okay? So think about this question here, you're trying to test you on the perspective of Michael, not from the steel bench itself. Okay? Now, let's move on to the second size knowledge that you have to learn will be the factors affecting the rate of evaporation. There are three main factors that you have to learn in your syllabus, will be the exposed surface area, the wind, and the temperature. And the size knowledge that you have to take away is that the water will always gain heat and evaporate into water vapor. Take note of the phrase here, water gains heat and evaporate into water vapor. And now the size knowledge, the third size knowledge you have to learn will be condensation. 
Condensation wise, right, is the opposite process of evaporation, whereby the water vapor will lose heat and condenses onto the cooler surface to form water droplets. Take note of the difference between water vapor and water droplets. Eh? Water vapor is in a gaseous state and water droplets is in a liquid state. Your clouds, right, the clouds in the sky, they are made of water droplets, so they are in a liquid state really. So you can see, right, there are now more and more science knowledge that your child has to know, all right? And you need to know how to apply this various science knowledge into one single question. What do I mean by that? Let me give you an example, all right? How the few science knowledge that you have learned now is applied to this second question down here, okay? Including different materials and including the knowledge on evaporation and condensation. So a device was set up to collect fresh water from muddy water, okay? The below device is placed under the hot sun for a few hours. So you can see down here, it's placed under the hot sun for a few hours. And explain how fresh water can be collected in the steel container after a few hours. Think no, what? Huh? This is question 2, part A, alright? So, do you know how to explain the thinking process behind this particular question? by applying the different size knowledge that we have learned just now, right? So we can see down here that this is muddy water and by placing this entire device in the under the hot sun, what will happen to the muddy water? Right, the water here will evaporate, right? You will gain heat and evaporate into water vapor. Can you see how I described the process? Okay, the water will gain heat and evaporate into water vapor. And what happened to the water vapor? The water vapor will continue to rise, right? And when it continues to rise, what will happen is that you will touch the cooler inner surface of the steel container. You can see down here, all right, this is a steel container. I'm using the exact same labeling keywords, all right, from the question. I don't want to create my own keywords, all right. I will use the exact same keywords to guide the examiner to the correct parts of the diagram. So when the water vapor rises and touches the cooler inner surface of the steel container, what will happen is that the water vapor will lose heat and condenses onto the cooler inner surface of the steel container and form water droplets. You can see how all right, I describe the entire process, right? how I explain out the entire process. And as a result, what happened? Many of the water droplets will be collected right, as fresh water. So that's the entire thinking process. So that's where I Re, uh, re paraphrase what I have already mentioned just now into all these words here. Muddy water gains heat from the hot sun and evaporates in the water vapor, and the water vapor will rise before losing heat and condenses on the cooler inner surface. Why must it be cooler? Because for water vapor to condense, the surface must be cooler right, at a lower temperature than that of the water vapor of the steel container to form water droplets. So the water droplets now gather and you will form into fresh water. Now, is this answer completely right or not? All right, you may think, oh yeah, this is quite you know straightforward. Right? I just have to mention all these keywords and apply them into this question. The answer is still wrong. Why? Because you mentioned the word muddy water. Muddy water is not correct because the mud will not evaporate. Only the water all right, will evaporate. So you need to be very careful down here, right? You must read the question very carefully. So the correct answer will be this. The water in the device gains heat from the hot sun and evaporates in the water vapor. And the water vapor will rise before losing heat and condenses on the cooler inner surface. Okay, you can see the level of details which we have used to describe right, the particular part of the diagram. So as to you can guide the examiner right, to that particular part of the diagram. And you'll form water droplets. And the last sentence I add here is because I want to link up the entire application of science knowledge back to the question, right? Which is fresh water. The question says, why is fresh water collected? Because there are many water droplets are collected as fresh water. Now let's move on to question 2B. Take note, whenever you have part A and part B, part B is related to part A, right? You need to use some information from part A to answer question number 2B. You have the same device here. This time around, the question mentioned this. If the steel container is changed to a glass container, will the amount of water increase or decrease over a short period of time? Kids, when you watch this, right, you need to be very careful again. 
The question says steel container. So if a student right who skim through very fast, uh, they will tend to misread this particular steel container. Why? Because steel container refers to the upper part of the device here, not the steel bottle, not the steel tube. So you need to know, all right, very you need to be very careful. All right, slow down and read the question carefully. All right, don't read too fast. The question is directing you to this particular part here. So they have changed the steel container to a glass container that is made of glass. So if you see this question again, two different materials, you need to apply the concepts of the good or poor conductors of heat ready. Okay? Now the question asks you, will the amount of water increase or decrease over a short period of time? Explain your answer. This question here is rather difficult uh, because it requires you to link up, all right, apply a few of the science knowledge into this one question. The first science knowledge, which is the good or poor conductors of heat, the second one will be the evaporation of water, and the third one will be the condensation of the water, water vapor, all right? So how are you going to answer this question? What's the thinking process behind here? So again, as usual, because this device is placed under the hot sun for a few hours, right? So the muddy water, or rather the water in the device will gain heat and evaporate into water vapor. So the first part here is always the same for this, for this question here. Now what will happen is that when you change the steel container to a glass container, what will happen? Glass, remember, is a poor conductor of heat. So when it's a poor conductor of heat, what will happen? The glass will take in heat from the water vapor at a much slower rate. Take note, when glass is a poor conductor of heat, glass will take in heat from the water vapor at a much slower rate. Okay? In other words, the water vapor will lose heat to the glass slowly. All right? Both ways, they have the same meaning. Uh, when the water vapor loses heat to the glass container slowly. Then the question says over a short period of time, you see, this is a condition here. Over a short period of time, what will happen? Less heat, all right, is lost to the water, sorry, less heat is lost from the water vapor to the glass container here, right? So when there's less heat lost to the glass container, do you think that a lot of water vapor managed to condense into water droplets? The answer is no, okay? So therefore, we can easily conclude that, all right, the amount of water collected in the glass container will be a smaller amount compared to the steel container. Again, because this question is rather difficult, that is why I have introduced the four general pointers here to explain out the uh, factors affecting the rate of condensation con uh, size knowledge. Okay? Again, this detail will be found in the online lessons. I have a lot more examples in the online lessons. But for this question, all right, because we need to explain the beginning process, all right, start off by saying water gains heat and evaporates in the water vapor. And when the water vapor rises, what will happen? The water vapor will lose the heat and condenses on the cooler inner surface of the glass container at a slower rate. Why at a slower rate? Because glass container is a poorer conductor of heat than the steel container. So you can see the top flow process, right? By mentioning the water vapor gains here, evaporate the water vapor first. And I also mentioned glass container is a poorer conductor of heat than steel container. And that is why, all right, the water vapor will lose it and condenses at a slower rate. And what's the end result? Because the question asks you, right, will you be able to collect a lot more water or a lot less water? All right, a lot more water or less water? The answer is less water droplets will be formed over a short period of time. So again, I cannot use the general pointers. I need to use the, uh, I need to re-paraphrase them and put them into the open and the answers. So that is where I have the answers reflected down here. The, the words that are highlighted in green, right, are words that I use right, based on the diagram. I use the exact same labeling from the diagram into my answer here so as to guide the examiner, right, which part of the diagram am I referring to, okay? And you can see, right, I mentioned about the science knowledge, which is a poorer conductor of heat, and I also mentioned about the science knowledge of condensation. So you can see, right, three science knowledge is applied to this single question down here. You need to know how to apply, right, these few science knowledge into one question. This will take practice, this will take more time, all right? So that's why 
in the uh, online videos i will show you i will show you quite a few examples how are you going to apply all these science knowledge into a single question you need to have some practice right to train up your thinking process behind these kind of questions once when you master it right you realize there is a pattern on. you will see how all right variations of questions will still apply the uh will still require the same size knowledge but it's applied in us different ways so i've went through question number one and question number two question number two b is rather difficult because you need to know three size knowledge you need to understand the three size knowledge which is good and poor conductors of heat evaporation of water and condensation of water vapor three size knowledge combined into one question this question to be is rather difficult all right it requires you to understand the thinking process behind it i've shown you the thinking process right in the previous part of the slides where i have drawn right the arrows going uh, where the water evaporates in the diagram right and what will happen after that all right and i also help you in terms of the uh general pointers that you can use down here all right to help you to structure your sentence so that you won't miss out any of these uh, important uh, pointers that is needed in your open-ended answers. All right? It takes time, it takes practice. In Science Shifu uh, lessons, I will be giving you quite a few examples on this so that you can go and practice it. Once when you practice a few of the questions, you will be ingrained in your mind already. And it's very hard for you to forget them. All right? You will see some patterns down there. One, all right? Because in science exam, knowledge science knowledge is always there and there are certain ways that you can use to apply the science knowledge to the exam questions now are there more ways in which how the science knowledge are applied to the exam question the answer is yes all right there are just too many ways in which how science knowledge is applied to the exam question let me give you some examples the first one will be what are the common experiments to test the real evaporation of water Remember, just now we went through the science knowledge on the evaporation of water, right? The first factor that affects it will be the, uh, the wind. The second factor is the temperature. And the last one is the exposed surface area, right? Especially the exposed surface area, I can have a few setups that will test your understanding of the uh, real evaporation of water. And you're supposed to determine which setup will have the least amount of water after some time, all right? Another type of uh, application will be the common real life scenarios, which I have uh, shared with you. One such example will be the uh, and question number one. All right, this real life scenario is a rising trend. You are supposed to relate the science knowledge to the uh, various kinds of situations that you face in the real life. Another example will be the spectacle. Why is it that when you step out of the shopping mall, your spectacle turns misty straight away? Okay. These are some of the ways in which how they can apply the science knowledge learned into the real life. Or another example will be the why is it when you step out of the bathroom, all right, or your toilet after you take a shower, you feel cold immediately? How are you going to explain it out clearly? All right, all these examples will be explained to you in great detail in the Science Shifu online courses. Now the last pointer: what other misconceptions that you have to clear before your exam? I personally find this to be very important because remember just now I mentioned to you, right? You need to clear three main hurdles. The first hurdle is to understand the science knowledge. The second hurdle is to uh, read the question very carefully, understand what's the demand of the question to, from you. And lastly, you need to explain your answer clearly, right? So if you have misconception about science knowledge, you have failed the first hurdle already. It means that you fell over the first hurdle. No point completing the second or the third hurdle already, right? So in the online lessons, I'll be sharing with you a lot of all those various misconceptions that you have to know uh, before you were to move on to the uh, answering the open-ended questions. Now, I understand that some of you will want to have the lesson notes, which is this particular PowerPoint slides. I've made it, them, I've made it available for free. All, right, all you have to do is just to go to the Science Shifu website. All right, click on the resources page down here. All right, and you will be able to see the uh, PowerPoint slides for you, uh, for you to download. Or alternatively, you can just simply go to the, click on the link below this particular video. All right, I posted a link below this video on YouTube. Just click on it, and you will be able to access the, uh, get the uh, PowerPoint slides for free. Now, how does Science Shifu train your child? 
All right, Sai Shifu trains your child in these four main areas. Every lesson, all right, Sai Shifu will train your child in these four main areas. The first one is, all right, I will be going through the science knowledge so that your child will remember, all right, the science knowledge. Don't waste time on, all right, recalling back what exactly is science knowledge. For example, what is a material that is a good conductor of heat? Oh, uh, iron, steel, aluminum. How does it work? All right, material will gain heat quickly. These are the basic science knowledge. And I'll be showing you some of the super memory techniques, right, to quickly recall back all this science knowledge. Now, by remembering it's not enough, you need to understand how the science knowledge works, right? So I, I will give you some very simple examples, like what so I mentioned just now, right? Or oh, what are some of the materials that are good conductors of it? Why are they good conductors of it? Or oh, because they gain heat quickly. So therefore, the material, the metal plate is very hot, right? If you place them under the hot sun for a few hours. And as what I mentioned just now, I will be clearing your misconceptions all right, very important because if I don't clear your misconceptions, there is no point going to the second hurdle or the third hurdle, right? And very important, once when we we all once we went through all these three, the last one will be do this. I will be showing you what are the various ways in which all right the questions are tested and how are you going to apply the techniques? All right, how are you going to apply the science knowledge to the exam questions? I will be teaching you all the various ways. All right, how the science questions, the science exam question will test your child. And I'll also be highlighting all the traps, keywords, conditional words, especially in science experiment, there are a lot of conditional words that you have to know, all right, your child has to know. And all these are summarized into one method, which we were calling the science shifu method, all right, because science shifu does not believe in, make, in letting your child memorize all the template answers, which can be so painful, all right. I want your child to be able to understand the thinking process behind each of these questions. Initially, no doubt, the thinking process can be a bit slow, but through practice, right, through weekly practice, just one hour, one to one and a half hours a week, all right, you will be able to hone the thinking process and you'll be able to quickly apply the science knowledge to many different questions out there. And lastly, most importantly, will be the uh, ability to write your answers clearly, okay? So it's like, I always tell my students right, in the class, it's like you are a detective trying to spot clues in the exam questions. And after spotting all the clues already, you're supposed to paint a story, right? What's the scientific thinking process behind that? And from that, you will be able to write out your answer in a logical manner. Now, Sai Shifu currently has these courses. The first one is the PSLE Science Premium course. This premium course is suitable for your child who is taking PSLE all right, in other words, your child is going to P6, okay? Now, this course comes with a seven days free trial, right? It's absolutely free. Straight away, if you want to enroll your child, do it now. Enroll your child to these online courses, right? Get your seven days free trial, right? Immediately access all the courses. Uh, access the lessons that are available for you, all right? And where I'll be sharing with you, teaching your child all the techniques, all right, to master the particular science knowledge. And in each lesson, there will be quizzes and worksheets provided, all right? And your child will also be entitled to receive unlimited homework help, all right? What do I mean? All right, you as a parent, you may want to buy some assessment book for your child, right? Your child may want to do more practice. So if let's say your child does not know, oh, what are some of the, uh, uh, how to answer this question? Is my answer techniques right or not? All right, you can always go and WhatsApp or send a, email to Sai Shifu and Sai Shifu will reply to you as soon as possible, all right? Take note that there are limited spaces available. Even though it's an online course, I restrict the limited space because I want to make sure that all of my students receive the quality uh, homework help, quality guidance they deserve, all right? So you as a customer will be my first priority, my highest priority. Similarly, for the P5 Science Premium course, it also comes with a seven days free trial, all right? The benefits of this P5 course is exactly the same as the PSLE Science Premium course. Now, as for the PSLE Science Premium course, you'll be learning, as usual, the P6 topics, for example, like forces, all right, energy, man's impact on environment, adaptation. Those are found in the P6 course. P5 course, all right, you'll be learning, like, reproductions, all right, all the various types of, uh, uh, topics that you'll be learning in your P5 syllabus. 
Now, think what P5 and PSLE Science Premium course includes the P3, P4, all right, knowledge. Right, you is included inside that. So you don't have to worry. You may, uh, some parents have asked me, oh, P5 course, is it mainly just to teach P5? No, all right. It includes the P3 and P4 science knowledge inbuilt in the P5 science premium course. Similarly, for the PSLE science premium course, it includes the P3, P4, and P5 science knowledge in the PSLE science premium course. These are some of the testimonials all right, from satisfied customers. This particular mother here all right, commented that her daughter likes the online course very much, especially the questions they are very interesting. At the same time, all right, their explanation is very clear. And this another mother also all right, commented on the usefulness of the materials. It helps his son, also it helps her son all right, to score very well in her in his prelim exam. So what are you waiting for, right? Just sign up now, right? Get your seven days free trial and immediately access the online lessons ready, all right? Start revision. Uh, start your uh, learning of science concepts immediately, all right? Learn to discover the various ways, all the ways in which how the science knowledge are tested in your exam. Now, some of you may prefer the physical classes, all right? You still prefer, you know, the teacher teaching you personally, all right? So, good news, I am currently teaching at the Bugis branch, and the address is here, it's at 37 Middle Road, UWEI building, alright? The details of the lesson plans are provided again in the website link found below this video, alright? So you can go and have a look at it. And this, this lesson here is conveniently located, alright, very near to the National Library building, less than two minutes walk away only. So if you have, let's say you have a younger child, alright? You want to bring, you want to drop down, you want to bring your elder child to the center to let us teach, right? We offer, all right, not just only science lesson, we also offer English creative writing classes and also the math classes, all right? Again, thank you for watching this particular video, right? I highly recommend you to subscribe to the YouTube channel, right? Because I'll be posting a lot of, uh, not just only more learning tips, but also cool experimental videos for you and your child, all right? So it can be not just only being serious, but also at the same time, I'll try to make science lessons more interesting, engaging, and fun for your child. Now, if you have more, any other questions, all right? You can always uh, send an email to me at andyling at scienceshifu.com, all right? So be the first to receive, all right, new lesson updates, new uh, videos, all right, by subscribing to the YouTube channel, the Science Shifu YouTube channel. Thank you.